In this video, we'll take a look at two quick and effective motion design techniques and how I used it to put together this motion title scene. Welcome back everyone, hope you're doing well. We're going to dive straight into the tutorial, but if you're new to the channel, my name's Shaw Gonsalves from Animation Deconstructed. Make sure to subscribe and turn that bell notification on so you know when I release new videos. So inside After Effects, I have just got two text layers here and it's a 1920 by 1080p screen and I've got about six seconds long with 30 frames per second. I'm just going to create a background here, new solid, call this BG, press OK, and then come over and we're going to add a four color gradient. I'm going to double click that and you should see something like this. We're working mainly with two colors here. So the first one being a dark purple, which is 130017, if you want to follow along and the other being 00, FF, and 84. I'm gonna zoom out a little, and I'm also going to spot this purple. And then I'm going to move this down here to get some sort of interesting look. Move this over here and something like this. And I'm going to drop this behind the text. Next thing we're gonna do, we're going to work on the actual text animation. Starting with the motion text, press the U button twice. Come over to the animate button and we're going to add an opacity. I'm gonna take down the opacity to zero. And then I've just added marker on here at three frames. If you wanna do the same, just press the star key at three frames forward so that we know where we're starting our animation. I'm going to drop down the range selector and I'm going to turn on the start move over to about one second and I'm going to drag this up to 100%. Next thing I'm going to drop down the advanced and I want to randomize the order so turn this on and if we scroll through this we should see something that's a bit more interesting. Next thing I want to do is we can twirl that up and just come over to the add and I want to add a wiggly selector. It's going to change a few things on here. I don't want the mode to be intersect, I want it to be subtract. So let's just move backwards a bit. And then I'm going to move to the three frames and take the max amount and the minimum amount. And you can see the first one is 100% and the other one is minus 100%. So we'll take those back to the same parameters at the end. Keyframe these on at three frames. Move over to one second. And the first one was 100% and the other one was minus 100. Now if we just give this a play, also want to just add a bit more wiggle to this. So I'm going to take the two wiggles per second up to about six. Let's take another preview. That's looking a lot better. I'm going to close this up and I want to add one more animator. So the way you need to do this is just select the word text, go over to animate, and we're going to add a scale. If you have the first animator selected, it'll actually add the scale to that animator. Next thing I want to do is take the scale down to zero, move to, let's say about four frames. Going to drop down the advanced and I'm going to take the smoothness down. So this is going to jump around a lot more. Let's go to the offset and you can see you can drag this back to minus 100. Keyframe that on at four frames. Move over to one second and we'll take this all the way to a hundred. Now we should get quite a bit of a different look to this. Close this up and the last thing I want to do is actually add a minimax effect to this. So minimax, drag this onto the word. And there's a few things I want to do first. I want to use the channel alpha and color. And then I also want to just have this text stretching left to right, not on the vertical. So I'll change this to just horizontal, move to about the fourth frame. And I'm going to drag up on this radius and you'll see what happens when we do this. So I'm going to take this up to about 150, turn the keyframe on and press U so we see all our keyframes. Then I'm just going to add a few more as we move forward. So let's take this down to zero, move forward a little bit more, drag this up, something like this, and then just take this down again. Something I want to do, let's just press U twice and I want to change that scale. Let's drop down the advanced again and let's change this to randomize the order and take a look at one more time. That's looking a lot better. I'm going to twirl all of these up and then I'm just going to move to the third frame so I know when I copy and paste, it's going to paste in the same place. I will just copy the animator one and animator two, control C, select the secrets text, control V, Copy the effects as well and control V, press the U button and let's just move this radius over so it's in the right place. And then I'm just going to move this text forward to about the 10 frame mark and take one preview. The last thing I want to do is actually add some glitch to this. And if you've watched any of my other tutorials, this is pretty easy. Just right click new solid, call this glitch texture. Okay. 
Come over here and type in fractal noise. Change the soft linear to block. We're going to drop down the transform. Take off the uniform scaling and we're going to, we're going to drag the scale width all the way up. So hold shift and just drag it until it locks. That'll be about 10,000. Then I want to take the scale height. Let's just drag this up as well. Take down the complexity, let's say about 3.8. Maybe I can drag this back a little. Make this a round number so you can follow along to 50. And then I'm just going to come to the offset and just move this along until I get something in the middle here. I'm going to pre-compose this, Control shift c move all the attributes into the composition, press OK, and then drop this to the bottom. Then I actually want to pre-compose all the text and the glitch together. Pre-compose this, call this text, press OK, and then we're going to go inside here, turn off the glitch texture, and I'm going to right-click New Adjustment Layer, and let's call this uh, Displacement. Let's add a Displacement to this, Displacement Map, double-click. And we're going to point this at the glitch texture and you should start seeing slight changes to this. So let's move over here so we can see it more. I'm going to drag this up and you'll see we can actually add quite a bit to this. Let's choose 250 and then take it off the vertical. And then I just want about six frames of this. So moving to about six frames, select the layer, Control Shift D to cut it and delete the other piece. I'm going to move this over. And then I'm going to duplicate that and just move it over again somewhere so that we get this intermittent glitch happening. Just play with the positioning the, with these until you're happy. Let's do one RAM preview on the background and take a look. Okay, I'm really happy with that. In this next part, we're going to take a look at how to create this interesting swirling background. To create this background of here, we're going to actually just use a stroke with a dashed line. First thing we need to do is actually zoom out slightly, select our pen tool, start at the top here. We're going to create an arc. We need to draw off the side here a bit and then just drag. Set this down to one point just so that we can see what we're doing. Something like this should be good. We can always adjust it as we're working with our animation. Uh, let's make this white and we don't need any fill. So select over there, no fill. If you don't have a stroke, just select the word stroke, put it on solid and change it to white and I have one pixel. Moving forward, let's press the U button twice and then pop up the stroke, pop it down again and then we're going to change the butt cap to round cap and the mitre join to round join. This is going to give our stroke those rounded edges. So let's take the stroke right up again and you can see that rounding on the edges. I'm going to make this really thick, so about 440. And then we're going to drop down the taper and the start length I'm going to take up to 100%. The end length I'm going to take up to 100%. You can see it really tapers this and makes it a lot thinner. That's why I made it so thick. Next thing I want to add some dashes because we're going to create these dots all over. So dropping this down you don't actually see anything. You need to press the plus button to add a dash. And then we need to press the plus button once more and this will add a gap for us. I'm going to take the dash down to 1 and then drag up on the gap and you'll see we start seeing this line, the stroke change. Let's leave this at about 45 and we can pull up on the next thing I want to do is add a repeater which will repeat this across and we'll deal with the actual size of these balls later. So come up to add, I'm going to choose repeater and we're going to drop down to see the options. I want about 50 copies of these and then I'm going to drop down the transform of the repeater and let's change the position to minus one so it's moving back this way and the rotation drag up slightly about five should be good go up to that wave drop down over here and this is where it's going to actually control these round circles I don't actually want this wavelength to be anything so I'm going to take that down to zero but the amount I'm going to drag up and you'll see this change as we drag up Let's leave this at about 85. Let's drag forward slightly so we can see our text. And I just want to have this arc kind of going on the outside of this text. So with that thought, I can select my word path one, select this, and you can see how you can just change this arc by playing with the Bezier curve. Next thing I want to do is add a trim path. Drop this down, move to the first frame. And what we're going to do to animate this is actually animate the offset. So I'm going to keyframe that on. Let's make this animation actually just four seconds. So move our work area in here and make this about two. It's looking pretty good. Last thing I need to do is actually animate this on. 
So I'm going to change a bit of what this trim part is doing. Let's drag this up to 100 and let's drag this down to about 30. I'm going to swap this around. It's actually pulsing in and out. And if you look here on the stroke here, this line is going to start animating in right over here. So I need to rotate this backwards. So this will be controlled by the offset. And if we just drag backwards, we can see this just moving off slightly. Next thing we need to do is just come down to the copies, keyframe the copies, move this over to about say one second, and then take this down to zero. And let's take a look at how this looks. I'm going to come over to the shape path, just drag this out a bit. You just want to play with this so that you don't actually see anything turning on. Last thing is just to change the color. I'm going to select my background, copy this green, select the shape, go over to the color of it, paste that in, and we should have our animation. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, take a look at either of the two videos popping up on screen right now. Keep animating, and until next time.